Welcome to SketchUp Basics. First, to get to this screen, you will need to log on to SketchUp and it will ask you what model type you want. You want to select the very first one that is simple inches. If you are using MySCC, log into MySCC and then click on to Citrix. Once the screen comes up, you will find uh, SketchUp on the desktop. That's at the top bar and you can just click right into it. All right, if everybody is up and running, then this is the screen that you will go into. This is what you open up and, and SketchUp defaults with a person and we can see the person that's right here. Um, uh, there's always a person and we can remove the person or add the person, but we always want to have uh, a scaled person in our drawing so that it gives us the sense of size and volume. So SketchUp, keep in mind, is a three-dimensional drawing format. So unlike CAD, we're drawing not only uh, uh, depth and width, but we're also recording height. So it's important to understand that you're working in three different dimensions. Some of the other basic things that are here is the blue line is our vertical axis. The red line is our horizontal and our green line is our depth. So we have width, depth, and height. The other thing that you'll notice is right up here at the top is the sky. And here is the ground below. So that the line that separates the two, this line right here is your horizon line. And by manipulating, we can we can move that horizon line back and forth. Let me go through some of the basic tools that we will be using in this process. Now remember, we are only doing SketchUp wireframes. So, um, so we're not going to be using all of the tools. We're just gonna use some very basic tools and I want you to have an understanding of those. So first is the select tool. And it's right here. If you left click on that, you'll see that the cursor turns into that shape. And we can select any number of things around our drawing. We only have one object and that's the person. So if we select that person, we're just gonna left click on that person. We get the blue halo. The blue halo means that we have selected an object and any of the other tools that we use will will affect that object and that object only. So let's just click off to the side and unselect that. Um, the next tool is our erase tool. And our erase tool is just that. It can erase um, uh, any line or object or anything that you need. In this particular case, let's, so let's hover over the top of our person and if we left click on our person, you'll see the highlight and coming up, the person will disappear. So we've eliminated that. Now we want our person in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo a race under edit. The next tool that I wanna talk about is the measuring tape tool. And the measuring tape tool is a great tool and we're going to use it a lot. So. With the measuring tape tool, it, it, it can measure from one object to another object and tell us how far it is. The other thing that the measuring tape does is it gives us or it creates guidelines. And guidelines are kind of uh, invisible lines or imaginary lines, similar to our access li axes lines. So the way I use the measuring tape is I have to have some place to start. So I'm going to just identify the green axis by double clicking uh, with my left click and that gives us the green axis. So now it becomes a guideline. So I'm going to move when you you're going to left click down and let it go. Then you're going to move your cursor in a direction. In this case, my direction is blue. So my line is going vertically. 
I want to do a horizontal line, so I want it to go in the red direction. Now, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, right down here, you will see that it is giving you the length that you're sitting at. And sometimes it can be really hard to get, let's just say we wanted 16 feet, to get right down to 16 feet is really, really difficult. So, why I am moving my cursor, I can actually type in 16 and then the feet and hit enter and it will put me a line out 16 feet. Now I can also use my measuring tool to click and bring it over until I'm on the line and you'll see that it is actually 16 feet. Alright, I'm going to pull my line back. I'm going to do another line just for practice and we're going to put this one at 12 feet. Now it's important to remember that when you're measuring that SketchUp the default is inches. So if you want six feet, I'm going to double click on my red now because I want to go in a different direction. So I've identified my red marker and I want a line. Do you see I'm going in the green direction? So I want uh, I, I, like four feet, eight inches, and it will give me that dimension and I can double check that. Four feet, eight inches. All right, so I'm going to do another line and I'm going to do it from this. So I'm on zero and I want to go out 48 inches and right there is 48 inches. So I've, I've set up these grids uh, or these guidelines and what this does is if we hover over the top of the intersection, it will tell us that we are on an intersection. If for some reason this line uh, uh, did not go in the green direction, it would be on a different plane. It would be higher or lower, and I wouldn't have the note intersection. That's how I know if I've done something incorrectly. So let's go back to, uh, to one of our other tools, the pencil tool. And in this case, when I click it, the pencil comes up, and the pencil allows me to draw uh, just a random line in any direction that I want to do. Um, the pencil line can be very, very helpful when we want to add a detail or something to an object that we've created. Now, we don't want to create objects with the pencil line, so we actually won't use this tool very often in the wireframe process. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase that so it's no longer in there. All right. The next tool that we use most often is shapes. And in this case, uh, shapes can create rectangles, it can create circles, and it can create polygons. I want to do a rectangle. So I'm going to do a rectangle right here where we did our crosshairs. And look, intersection. I'm going to left click and hold, and I'm just going to drag it to the opposite corner till I hit intersection and then I release and now I have a rectangle. Now if I want to try, I'm going to add me another guideline because I never draw a shape without a guideline. So I'm going to just click this at, oh I don't know, five feet or 60 inches and I'm going to try this circle tool. Now the circle always draws from um, it always draws from the center line. So we need to have a center line. So you click and then you drag until you get the width um, of the intersection. It measures in red radiuses because it's coming from the center line. So in this case, I've created a circle and I've also created a square. Um, another tool that we use often is the arc tool and you can tell the arc tool is different than the pencil because it has the pencil with a little arc. Now arcs can be made with with two points, three points or a pie shape. Any one of those will work for an arc. I most often use arcs for door swings and that sort of thing but sometimes we have arched windows or arched doorways or that sort of thing that this comes in very handy for. The next tool I'm going to go to is this one, the four squares. This is our move tool. Now our move tool can is very, very helpful in that it allows us, 
let's just say that uh, this tool uh, was here or this circle was here and I really didn't want it there. I wanted it to move over here. I can click on it and I can hold and I can place it wherever I want. I would set up another set of crosshairs in order to drag it somewhere. The other thing that, that we have, the other tool that we have is the push pull, push pull tool. And that's how we get height or depth on an object. So it gives me this little cube with the arrow. And when I hover over the top, you can see it becomes pixelated. And if I click on it and I move my cursor, I just click, roll my cursor up, and I can assign a height to this. So let's just say 18 inches for this particular circle. But keep in mind that it can go up or down. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter uh, in which direction. Let me do an undo, undo push pull. And I can do it and see I can make it go down under the ground like a pool or a pond or that sort of thing. So it can go in any number of directions. Now, what happens if I use the move tool after I've popped it up. Well, because this is now made up of, when I pulled it up, it's made up of multiple pieces. If I try to move it like I did before, it actually will stretch it and it will go up and down only, but it won't let me move in a direction up and down. It'll only let me do additional depths, but I can no longer move it. If I try uh, to move an object that's still two-dimensional that I haven't pulled up, again, I can do that very, very easily. And I can move it in any direction that I want. So this is the Move tool. The Rotate tool is the next one over. And when we're working two-dimensionally, we always want to work uh, with the blue uh, because that's our, our horizontal direction. Um, if I wanted, see, I can cast it around and this will allow me to move this area and swivel it left to right. So here, what I want to do is simply, I'm going to click and let it up. Then I'm going to move in the direction that I want to turn my object. Click again and let go. And then I can rotate it at whatever angle that I'd like. And I can type in that angle. I can type in that angle at uh, uh, 57 degrees. And it will automatically go in there. Typically, we do this at around a 45 degree angle. Now, I still have the opportunity to move it if it's not quite in the right place. But see, I've taken it out of square, so it won't let me. It's only going to move two walls. So moving it from the corner doesn't work. So let me undo that move. But if I take it from the inside, I can move the entire object around and replace it if I need to do that uh, in another location. So I can undo that move. Now, once I'm turned, so we can picture this as a chair or a table or something along those lines. Once I have it at the angle that I want, then I can do my push-pull to be able to, uh, to make that go up and down at whatever height that I want. In this case, you click, come up and down, and you can type in your, your height. Alrighty, so that's push-pull and turn. Um, so the next one that we want to talk about are this set of tools right here. The first one, or let's go to pan. Uh, pan allows you, and it becomes a hand, allows you to move left or right or up or down or kind of diagonal, but it stays kind of in the same plane. So it's just moving it left to right. What orbit does, is the next one over, is allows us to rotate 360 degrees. So I can look under things, I can look at on top of things, I can rotate to the left side or the right side. Let's say I wanted to add something on this side over here. I would simply rotate all the way to see this side. So that makes it quite easy when I, when I get to that point to be able to manipulate so I can accurately select something. Then we have the zoom tool. And the zoom tool, when we click on it, if you click and then 
pull your cursor up and down, you're zooming in and out. Now, sometimes what happens is we get too close to an object or we get inside the object and we don't know where we're at or how to get out of it. See how that happens? Uh, th that's not uncommon for you to happen. You know, don't know where you're at. Hit Zoom Extents. And this one, Zoom Extents, shows us all of the objects that we have drawn in our full plan as we go through this process. Now, a few things. Those are the basic tools that we'll be using. There are obviously a lot more tools that we could use. I'm going to zoom out just a hair here. You're, by the way, the um, if you're using a mouse, um, uh, your rollerball on your mouse uh, will also zoom in and out. Let me show you one thing to kind of avoid. I'm going to come out just a little bit. I'm going to put in some more guidelines here. And I'm on a guideline. Oops. I'm going to click drag in the red direction and let's just say 12 inches and then let's drag another one at 24 inches that looks fabulous and then i'm going to put another one out here at another 24 inches Oop, invalid so i hit the wrong okay so here at 24 inches or enter all right, so I'm going to show you something to kind of avoid. I'm going to have a rectangle right here, like this. And then I'm going to put in a circle. And this could be two rectangles, but I'm going to let them overlap. Um, this we want to avoid because a lot, of, a lot of things can happen in this case. So when they overlap, so you don't want to put like chairs underneath tables and that sort of thing for now. We can always move them later. But if we try to move this particular object and move it out here, see how it, it see this triangle that happens in here? It stretches that because it's its own ident it's its own object now. So what we want to do is undo that move. And let me show you something else. If we try to, let's just say we were going to do pop this up because it's a chair. See what happens? It, it goes, it only takes the section that it is. Now you can come in, let me undo this, undo push pull. We can take our eraser and actually eliminate this line. So now we've created two separate objects that that intersect but don't overlap. So when I do push pull, let's just say that this was a table and we're going to push it up at 36 inches. And then this is a chair. I'm going to use my rotate tool here to get a little better view of it. And now I can take push pull and take my chair up at uh, it's a 18 inches. And now we can do that and we can actually create these boxes that are inside of here. So avoiding these these overlaps in the beginning is a very, um, it, it's what I would recommend at this point in time. But you can see as we rotate around here. Now, something to think about. Again, we're drawing three dimensionally. So we have vanishing points. And in this case, right here, this is again our sky. This is our horizon line, and we know that vanishing points always occur on the horizon line. And see how all of my guidelines are going to one point? This is the vanishing point for this particular view. Now that'll change when I rotate, but you can really see the foreshortening that is coming here. Even though these are all parallel lines, they're like railroad tracks, if you will. They look like they come together in one point. Now, if I rotate my drawing a little bit, you can see the other vanishing point for this particular drawing is right here. So three-dimensional drawing is a little bit different than what you did in CAD, which was two-dimensional drawing. So we want to make sure that you kind of understand this process of, of, of the three planes that you're drawing it, width, depth, and height. All right, that concludes our basics, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.